Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer, from outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. The Line in the Sand, written by Average Cake Enjoyer. I doubt that you've heard of the Rathians, have you? I can't say that I have, Professor. Why? To be honest, sir, I didn't really expect you to. All for the better, I guess, sir. There is no need to scare our younglings needlessly like that. Scare us, sir. What are the Rathians anyway? Not what? Who? Before their fall a few centuries ago, they were one of the largest slavers in the galaxy. In truth, their whole race was bathed in blood before they even left their first planet, having enslaved other sapiens on their world. It is not much of a surprise they continue to do so after achieving spaceflight. Slavers? Why didn't the Alliance do anything about it? They couldn't. Not to diminish their actions by any means. They definitely tried to stop the Rathians. But by the time the Alliance caught wind of what they did, the Rathians had already subjugated at least 20 systems, their fleet nearly rivaling the Alliance's. So they did what they had to. They retreated. They knew it would be a Pyrrhic victory if they tried. So to protect the rest of the galaxy... They abandoned a whole third of it, completely isolated it from the rest of the galactic community, leaving behind countless other sapiens at the hands of the Rathians. It really was a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, to quote the Terran phrase. But you said that they've been defeated. If the Alliance couldn't do it, how? You'd be surprised. It was the Terrans and the Terrans... Surely not. Everyone knows they're one of the most peaceful races around. They are now. And they were then. They have always valued peace above everything else. Something their diplomats said had to do with their history. I've always respected that about them. Hell, they've even got rules for war. Something we ended up finding wasn't a sign of weakness. But they're just as good at warfare, competing with the best of us at times... They just find no reason to fight. Finding peaceful resolutions a better choice. What happened then? The Terrans came from the other side of the Alliance's blockade, near the border of it, to be a bit more specific. They managed to populate a few systems before they popped off on both the Alliance's and the Rathians' radar. To nobody's surprise, as soon as the Rathians took wind of another sapient species on their side of the border, a large fleet warped over Terran Brawl, broadcasting their demands for immediate and unconditional subservience, lest they want to get exterminated. So they did right, as much as I hate to say it. Being a slave is better than being wiped out. Evidently, um, they didn't seem to think so, immediately rejecting the Rathians' terms. Needless to say, the Rathians didn't take that rejection of the Terrans kindly. Soon after their broadcast ended, they sent dropships full of warriors towards their cities to occupy them while bombarding defense installations from orbit. They didn't take this incursion lying down, though. They fought tooth and nail on the ground and in space, but everyone watched the spike go on, knowing that it was a losing battle for the Terrans as soon as they took up arms against the Rathians. The Terran fleet, admittedly, was no match for their counterpart. Their ships a ragtag assortment of hastily modified civilian vessels and outdated warships from their own conflicts. Their obsolete fleet of ships with outnumbered troops proved to be a thorn on the Rathian side, though, as they used guerrilla tactics, forcing the invaders to pay in blood for each kilometer of ground that they took from the Terrans. Still, it sounds like they were outnumbered. There is no way they are going to win against that. They were outnumbered. And they weren't going to win. And they knew that. Those humans aren't stupid, you know. They knew that they were fighting an uphill battle against an overwhelming force. They fought relentlessly to stall the Rathian advance, all while preparing for the worst. The Rathians themselves weren't averse to bloodshed, knowing full well the cost of war. They paid the price of blood to take each and every world they landed on hostage. As they slowly advanced towards the final Terran-controlled system, their home system. Above the last planet, on their way to the Terran home system, they broadcast to them what was to be their biggest mistake. 
Every single datapad, monitor, and television on that planet was hijacked by the Rathians as they made their demands to the Terrans again. But this time, they had footage to accompany the Emperor's terms for surrender. And do you know what that footage was? What? They gathered all the footage from the incursion, playing videos of them bombing Terran cities, schools, hospitals, and military bases as they showcased close-up pictures of destroyed buildings and the corpses of their civilians and children, of all things. Naturally, this incensed the humans, their fury palpable at the treatment of their kin, but you know what pushed them over the edge? The Emperor's speech. How could it possibly be worse than watching the abhorrent footage? Here, let me play the recording of it. I knew keeping this data crystal would come in handy. It's not like you're going to find this without a whole lot of digging on the galactic net. Humans, heed my call. Surrender now or face complete extermination. You've seen what we are capable of. Think of it as a taste of what is yet to come if you continue to defy our glorious crusade. It is unthinkable for you to resist our attempt to uplift you, as you should consider yourselves blessed to serve beneath us, as we give your pitiful existence meaning. If you do not listen to my demands, my fleet will continue to advance and destroy all that remains of you. We shall kill your wounded and destroy your hospitals to deprive you of your safety. Your schools will fall, snuffing out your future. And your children will die, taking what hope you have left with them. So make your choice wisely, humans. I expect to hear your immediate surrender soon. My gods... It isn't easy to listen to, right? The Terrans thought so too. Their leaders and citizens enraged at the words of the enemy's emperor. But emotions did nothing to stop their advance. The world falling to the combined strength of the Rathian fleet. With nothing left to stand in their path, the Rathians made their way to the last bastion of humanity. Their home system, and what they found, surprised them. The time the Terrans bought with their lives wasn't spent on nothing, as they'd soon find out. The Rathians, seeing the massive fleet of hundreds of Terran warships waiting for them at the edge of the system. The Terran capital, ship, was gargantuan, the ship being what seemed to be a moon, the surface of it bristling with weapons and maneuvering thrusters. But, however threatening the renewed Terran fleet may have been, it wasn't an immovable object in comparison to what seemed like the Rathians' unstoppable force. The humans were outnumbered three to one. Yet, they fought valiantly, fighting the Rathians to a standstill, with neither of the fleets able to make a decisive move. But they both knew that eventually, something had to give. And that something gave. And it was... the Terrans. A Rathian spearhead managed to squeeze its way through the Terran lines, devastating the flanks and the rear of the human warships. Soon, the fighting devolved into chaos, the Terrans on the back foot. How, how did the humans manage to win? They didn't. They lost. But... In doing so, they made sure the Rathians didn't win. What do you mean... Knowing that they were fighting the battle that would decide their race's fate and that they were losing it, they did the unthinkable. With their capital ship crippled, the surviving Terran warships entered warp for a brief moment before reappearing in front of each of the enemy ships, destroying the remnants of both fleets in a glamorous display of explosions. Knowing that it wouldn't be long until Rathian reinforcements came and that they had nothing left to fight with, they used their final weapon. You see, their capital ships wasn't just a weaponized moon. It was also their uh, doomsday weapon. The moon split into tens of pieces as explosions cracked it open, each chunk the size of a large continent. 
Each of these chunks held a warp drive with just enough fuel for a one-way trip. At their destinations, Rathium ship docks, military outposts, anything of value. I don't have to explain to you the destructive power of a continent-sized chunk of rock leaving warp over a planet at a significant amount of the speed of light, but, 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 but that's complete insanity. You're right, but I don't blame them. They didn't have much choice in the matter. It was either that or annihilation. With their final actions, the Terran fleet crippled the Rathian war machine in an instant, giving the Alliance the opportunity it never had before. Coming to the Terran's aid, the Alliance fleet warped into the human system, finding a graveyard of ships waiting for them. The wounded remains of humanity still holding on by a hair. After that, there wasn't much work for the Alliance to sweep through the rest of the previously Rathian controlled space, eliminating pockets of resistance while they liberated enslaved races from their weakened grasp. But that's part of a chat for another time. Just know that the humans are a bunch of peace loving hippies. They'll be the best of friends, loyal to the end. But you dare cross the line in front of them. And you'll soon find that they can be the worst of enemies as well. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click and click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just quickly want to thank the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Ken Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kambaka.